Hi, my name's Don Matthews. I'm an academic anesthesiologist. Um, I teach residents. And one of the things that we teach at our program is how to use the EEG and the density spectral array to make decisions in taking care of our patients. Specifically, we have a TIVA training rotation where we use the principles of EEG and density spectral array to help learners understand how to make adjustments in propofol infusion to take, uh, take care of people. I believe it's necessary to use process EEG monitoring when you're doing a propofol TIVA anesthetic because there's a wide patient variability in, in dose requirement, much wider than, uh, say, an inhalational agent if you're doing an inhalational anesthetic. And so using the process EEG variable allows you to more specifically understand who's in front of you and what their requirements are. The teaching program involves uh, First of all, that first principle, that what, what the EEG is doing is observable, reproducible, and predictable with increasing doses of, of agent. Also that the EEG is associated with surgical conditions. So you can look at the EEG and understand that a patient is ready for a general anesthetic or is in a plane of sedation so that there's a connection between what you're seeing with your EEG and what your patient is demonstrating clinically. There's also a connection between the EEG uh, and the actual plasma level or drug level of the agents that you're using. So there's, there's a pharmacodynamic relationship between the patient's clinical state and there's a pharmacokinetic relationship between the plasma concentrations of the agents that you're using. So that's what we try to teach when we're, when we're starting to use the EEG to have the residents understand that these are important concepts. What we're trying to achieve through this teaching program is to have clinicians who can make these decisions about the adjustment of the propofol during a TIVA anesthetic uh, in an educated way. So we want them to be able to know when the conditions seem appropriate to increase the propofol infusion, when the conditions seem appropriate to decrease propofol infusion, or when things seem to be perfectly adequate. We also want them to understand that they're not using propofol uh, usually by itself. It's usually being combined with other agents, usually anti-nociceptive agents such as opioids, to create an anesthetic state. So the, the learning has to go beyond just this single agent propofol and how to use the monitoring to make decisions about propofol and the other things that you're using in the, in the, during the surgery. And finally, it's to understand that, like everything else, this information is taken in concert with everything else that we're seeing in the operating room. So that even though this information is very useful and can be very helpful, in and of itself, it's not enough to understand what's happening to your patient. You need your other monitors. You need to understand what agents you're giving and how much you're giving to put everything in context to make the right decisions for your patients. What we've learned is that we work with um, residents who, we start with residents who are not well experienced in, in EEG monitoring. And so we teach them from early on that you can use these monitors to help take care of your patients. And we find that people who are really new to the field and who are learning how to be anesthesiologists in particular are interested uh, in, in, and can pick these things up relatively quickly because they're not, um, previously programmed to think that you can't do it this way. So you find that experienced learners can certainly learn these principles too, but it's a little harder to get them to just to accept that the EEG can be used in this way. The teaching principles that we work with are, are several. One is because we're using the Massimo Sedline monitor, we first teach the learners how to use the monitor, how to make adjustments to the scales and how to set up the picture basically so that they can get the most benefit from. Uh, the second thing that, in concert with that, we teach is how to use the density spectral array, which is part of the Sedline uh, monitor, and I find to be an incredibly useful piece of uh, the information that we have available to us. We also try to teach propofol's mechanism of action. It's neurobiological effects on the brain, and those are the neurobiologic effects that cause the EEG changes that we're seeing on the monitor. So it's important to learn about the circuitry that propofol is affecting.